So what to expect for the coming trading week? Because we had <laughs> we had a really, 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 really bleeding stock market for the last three, four, six weeks, not even counting in where we were at the beginning of this year. So is the market now finding the bottom or at least are people more comfortable into starting to take some risk, putting some money to work back in stocks again? Let's look at some of the news that came out during this weekend that I believe are going to push the market to you know a higher level, but also look at some indicators that could move the market. Hence, looking at some of the plays if you want to swing trade, if you want to day trade, or if you want to you know, know where to put your money to work in order to not miss the greatest wealth transfer I talked to you about a couple of days ago. So, looking first at Investopedia, as we usually do on Thursday, I mean on, on Wednesday, I'm pfft, I can't speak today <laughs> on Sundays. So coming up this week, we have the retailers earnings, you know, um, companies like Walmart, Target, and then we have inflation from abroad and then housing updates. So not a lot of things as we had last week with indicators, which could be a good thing, all right, because it's not going to put a lot of in, uh, uh, um, focus into the bad news, all right, if there is. Now, um, on the earnings side, which is really important this week is about um, the retailers. Retailers are those companies that are that we spend our money in on a daily basis, even if not on a weekly basis, like Home Depot, Lowe's, Target, Walmart, you know, when it comes to groceries and other stuff that we spend on, you know, our lifestyle on a regular basis. This is going to give an insight onto, well, where people are spending money. So it means where the sentiment is still high and how these companies that are, you know, kind of know exactly where we spend our money in a daily basis, how do they feel inflation coming from a consumer standpoint? Is the numbers from the last three months confirming the CPI that we had from last month and what are their projections when it comes to the coming months? So it's going to actually give us an insight or an additional insight into what to expect for inflation when it comes from a consumer um, st uh, standpoint. And then we also have further updates on the housing market. Remember, inflation has a lot to do with the housing market, rent and mortgage. Whenever this is high, you can expect inflation to also remain high. But lately, people have been talking about, well, the supply. So many more houses being pushed into the market, which ultimately can help bring down the demand, especially with mortgage rates past now 5.5 or 5.4 percent. All right. And then finally, not that much of a moving market event, but still to kind of see how other countries are also dealing with their own consumer price index for the month of April. And then after that, we have you no know, earnings when it comes to other companies, like I mentioned earlier, you know, GD.com, Walmart, um, Trip.com, Home Depot, Baidu for the, uh, 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 those, and then U.S. retail sales that are going to give us for the month of April, how are we still spending the money, you know, in the, the industrial production, you know, those are kind of the things that we want to look into because they're going to give us a pretty good indicator on how inflation, how these companies are feeling inflation and what to expect. So, Still a lot to do with, with inflation, which is to kind of the biggest risk in the market today. And so uh, expect another week of volatility. I wouldn't be surprised if either we stay flat or the market, you know, ends another losing week, but not by much. And then I want to also share with you a brighter, you know, kind of news. Shanghai is to gradually reopen businesses as COVID cases drop. This is a very interesting thing because it means not only... We're not worried as much when it comes to the global economy slowing down too much. And it also means that because these businesses are in China, they also contribute to supply chain, you know, because lots of shipments and supplies and stuffs are coming from China. So if they are now open or at least gradually reopening, it means, well, um, we can also expect supply chains to not be too much constrained because they were locked and they didn't contribute to factories working, et cetera, et cetera. So I believe the market can react posit positively to this news. And some of the other technicals when it comes to the market, timers, people who are kind of trying to find where the market is going to stop crashing or maybe indicating that we are at the beginning of the end 
of the stock market correction that we started or that started you know early in in 2022 and that accelerated in the last couple of weeks so these two news may also push the market a little bit higher because it's going to improve the sentiment whenever there is uncertainty people tend to take the money out of um, I mean, off of the the stock market table but now that you know we have a little bit of positive news it smooths out the fears and people are now more confident into putting that money back into the market. So I'm expecting, you know, a couple of interesting plays here to be um, very, very, very lucrative in terms of, you know, maybe short terming. Because when you look at airlines, for example, that have when, when we look at the earnings, the, the earnings on United, I mean, on airlines companies were really strong in terms of bookings and they also increase the price. So it's when you look at where the, sh the, the, the share price of those companies are, I mean, it's not reflecting yet that, that, that increased impression and that good news. So I will be betting on that. Definitely, I will be betting on oil and energy sector. You know, I'm a big energy investor when it comes to investments, when it also comes to, you know, swing trade, day trade, just because of the news around Shanghai, all right? I'm expecting oil to actually, you know, also... Uh, 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 not shoot up that too much, but actually stick up a little bit based on this news. So energy plays, especially the you know, small caps, and also depending on this inflation thing, when we hear a lot from these earnings companies, maybe the interest rate, I mean, maybe the treasuries are going to pull back a little bit. And if it's the case, you can definitely expect the NASDAQ, the tech sectors to also tick up a little bit. So I'm expecting some short selling to be covering or short sellers to, to be covering this week. Hence, you know, beating down stocks like, you know, maybe the Palantir, maybe the Teslas, maybe the, the Apple, um, the NVIDIAs, the AMDs, you know, the, 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 the maybe not Afrin because Afrin already up 60% since a couple of days. But I mean, those stocks that you, like dropped significantly in the past days to actually rebound. So I'll also be looking into that, but those are kind of the plays that I have in mind. So if you're interested into taking part of those plays, drop me a comment in the down below, and uh, we'll see how it goes for the, for the coming week.